Welcome to your Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. It is quiet in the central U.S. The surface map showing high pressure from Louisiana up to Illinois. As is typical with these high pressure areas, we have warm air advection on the west side. So temperatures are recovering in Texas and Oklahoma, and we will see records being broken over Christmas, and we'll get to that shortly. On the other side, cold air advection spilling into the Appalachians and the eastern U.S. Temperatures down into the 30s and 40s, which is fairly seasonable for this time of year. And some active weather out west. Fog in some of the interior valleys and an atmospheric river set up now starting to affect California. Now you'll notice one little front off the California coast right here. If we go to the official surface map, they don't seem to show that. Yeah, there's the surface analysis. That's why it's important to do your own analysis. Because you'll catch details like that. A very thick band of thickness values indicating a frontal transition zone in that area. And that's helping to support that atmospheric river that's affecting California. Then taking a look out in the Pacific, let's head north a little bit. A fresh incursion of cold air coming down into the Pacific Northwest. And some active weather up there in Alaska. Let me pan that up in that region. Heavy snows coming down in the Bering Sea between Anadir and Bethel. And some very warm air coming up into the southwest part of the state. Temperatures rising to a relatively toasty 34 there at Bethel. And 40s as you get into the Aleutians. Inland still quite cold. They've had an incursion of very cold air from Siberia that has mostly moved eastward along the north slope. And then moving on into Canada, those who were here for our supporter stream on Monday, we were showing 50s in Greenland along the west coast. That came close to records for the month. And that's due to a very deep southerly and easterly flow across Greenland with downslope flow in western Greenland. That's allowed temperatures to come up there quite a bit, and it helped demarcate this front, which has been in place for about three days now, not moving very much, but it defines a boundary between the very cold inland continental air and the relatively warm maritime and heavily modified tropical air coming over Greenland. Looking down in Canada, another continental system moving through Quebec, producing some snows all the way down towards Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. And offshore, a very powerful system along the Gulf Stream. Some heavy rains and thunderstorms embedded in that. I forgot to put the thunderstorm markings on there, but there was lightning flashes in that region right there off the coast of Massachusetts. And we've come full circle, and that's our weather across the U.S. Let's look at the temperature records. And before we do that, let me introduce you to the pattern we're going to get into. This is what it looks like this afternoon. You can see a lee side trough from Wyoming to Colorado down to New Mexico, and that's given us a westerly component off the higher terrain and given us downslope warming across the high plains and central Great Plains. If we run this forward into tomorrow and New Year's Eve and Christmas, a very stout westerly component, which is just going to accelerate that downslope warming. And we're going to see records all the way from Nebraska down to Texas. What kind of records? Let's check it out. Well, for today, no records. We're close to December normals. For Thursday, the 23rd, Lawton will be breaking the record by one degree for the date, and Midland coming close with 81. For Friday, on Christmas Eve, records will be broken from El Paso to Midland and Lubbock, coming up into the 80s in much of that region. And Wichita Falls, 86, 81 in Austin, and also a little bit of warm weather 
as well in the Central Plains, Nebraska, and Iowa, seeing 60s, 50s, and 40s. For Saturday, on Christmas, it gets even more dire. 85 at Abilene, breaking the record by 9 degrees. Also breaking the record for the date in a huge swath from Roswell all the way to Memphis, all the way to Mississippi, and even Asheville coming in with 68. The heat wave continues for Sunday, hanging on to those mid-80s. Looks like much of that warmth centered just off to Caprock around Childress and Abilene, but 80s extending all the way into East Texas. Looks like the same deal for Monday the 27th, And same thing for the 28th. That kind of heat in the southern U.S., you either love it or you hate it. But we are seeing some indications of a change coming up around New Year's Day. Maybe to the second or third looks like possibly an outbreak of cold air coming south, but that's still quite a ways away. Here's the way the warnings look for this afternoon. The focus is on wind in much of the high plains and on snow, especially in the higher elevations of California. Sierra Nevada is expecting two to four feet. And let's see what the atmospheric rivers are doing. Well, we've got one headed right into central California, coming on shore just south of San Francisco, and the IVT value is coming onto the coast, running about 500. So this is going to be about a moderate strength atmospheric river that will be moving into the Los Angeles area overnight into tomorrow. And it looks like it broadens out tomorrow. Pretty much the entire state getting some of that moisture. And then one good push Thursday night into Friday coming into Los Angeles and San Diego. You can see the IVT values on this are 800 to 1,000, which is very significant. We're looking at about 2 to 4 inches of rain in some parts of Southern California, some local amounts up to 5 to 6 inches, and that spreads into Arizona and New Mexico and dries things out for the West Coast around Christmas. Now, another way we can examine that influx of moisture is with precipitable water. That's the hypothetical amount of precip that would fall if you squeezed out the entire vertical column into a rain gauge. We're seeing values of about one and a quarter inch coming onto the California coast there, and the purple indicating an inch and a half. And that heads into the San Diego area late tomorrow night, Thursday evening. And you can see a little bit of terrain blocking there, the moisture trying to cross the mountains of Baja, California. Looks like quite a bit of it does emerge on the other side in Arizona. Some drying as we get into Saturday and Sunday, but this does indicate probably a lot of cirrus, at the very least, crossing from northwest Mexico into Texas. So that'll help to dampen some of the heat a little bit. And let me just quickly run a skew T in the Midland area for around Christmas Eve. And you can see that a lot of the moisture is in the mid and upper levels and the lower levels relatively dry. And there's that very stout westerly flow. The hodograph extending from zero through one kilometer, stretching out to the east as we get into that stronger upper air flow in the mid levels. And we'll just take a quick look at the long term. You can see some gulf moisture starting to come up around the 26th and 27th. And depending on the upper air conditions, that can sometimes produce severe weather outbreaks, but not this time. Around the 27th, there's that moisture, inch and a half over Texas, and the tropical air deepening to about five to 6,000 feet. That can support severe weather, but looks quite warm in the mid-levels. So that's going to keep things capped and keep the cape reduced. Another surge coming northward around the 28th, 29th. Now this could support some MCS activity in the Mississippi River region. That's coming up to about an inch and a half of precipitable water and now we're starting to look a little bit cooler in the mid-levels and those capes are starting to inch upwards. 
Looks like a good push of cold air coming south, stalls out in the central U.S. Around the 30th, another surge of tropical moisture. So it's going to be kind of a swamp-like holiday from Christmas into New Year's. Some cold air coming south. Yeah, that's going to be a fairly stout backdoor front. And here we've pretty much cleared out all the moisture and replaced it with cool air around the 4th. But that's getting towards the extended period of the run, so we're not going to worry about that too much. With abundant moisture in the southern U.S. from Christmas into New Year's, we need to start looking at severe weather. And when is the most likely time we're going to get that? Let's just kind of quickly size that up with a supercell composite. And I'm just trying to get a feel for what it's showing. Things look very minimal up until around the 29th. So this could be a day to watch. That's going to be one week from now. And you can see that's focusing kind of on the lower Mississippi River Valley. It's easy to see that tropical moisture snaking northward with the low-level jet. So we're kind of visualizing some of that going on. Some enhancement around the 30th in Texas, up into Arkansas, and up into the Ohio River Valley for New Year's Eve. So possibly a couple of shots around the middle or end of next week for severe weather, but it's way too early to know exactly how that's going to play out. So let's head to the surface chart and kind of get a feel for what it's showing. I'm going to advance this all the way up to the 28th and 29th. Yep, you can see one little convective complex there around the 28th. And the possibilities there in Texas, kind of vague. Yeah, this is painting out a warm front setup. You can see the cooler air in the low levels, very shallow, and a curved hodograph. So the 30th could have potential in Texas. So in summary, the weather will be getting more dynamic. You can see that western U.S. system coming through around New Year's Eve, crossing the Rockies and heading into the central U.S. on Christmas. So the main effects will be confined to the I-70 corridor up into Chicago, Detroit, and the northeastern U.S. Mild elsewhere and unsettled across much of the Rockies. And here's another system around the 27th up in the Midwest. And just kind of like a broken record right there. And that's probably a good place to stop right there. I know we don't look at a Europe very much, but let's see what's going on. This is indicating a strong Atlantic influence, westerlies, and little weather systems spreading across the UK, France and Germany, the Bay of Biscay. There's another system coming into Spain and France around Christmas and another one for the 27th. So just kind of a wet and unsettled pattern, and it does not look cold. I figured I would show you something unusual and interesting. The Severe Storm Forecasting book, which some of you may have, got translated into Chinese several years ago. Now, obviously, we're not on very good terms with China right now, but back in 2011, that's when the China Meteorological Administration asked to translate it for their forecasters. And it did take several years to get the funds, but they did pay. And I can see a lot of attention to detail in this translation. It's interesting to see. You don't see too many Chinese meteorology books. And that's how the weather looks on this Wednesday afternoon. Now, I'm going to make a special deal with you all. As long as we keep getting a new supporter each day and the number keeps going up, I will continue to do a show daily. So if you're enjoying this program and you're not a supporter, you can make a show happen tomorrow by going to Patreon and becoming a supporter. And as soon as the number does not go up, we're going to return to the usual Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Now, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm not too sure. We're going to have to see how that goes. But this definitely applies to Monday through Friday inclusive. 
So if you want to see a daily show, head over to Patreon and make that happen. And that's all for today. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening, and we'll see you back here either tomorrow or Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.